Well, g'day, flatties and globe defenders. It's Critical Think from Down Under. But as it turns out, this force is not negligible. This has huge ramifications because what it means is that everything on the spinning globe should be pulled, however small, to the equator. We are supposed to believe that uniform circular motion or spin of the Earth is powerful enough to smush the ball, yet we can't measure even the slightest force of pull toward the equator. Anyway, let's get on with it. So, here's the reason why you're not going to be able to measure FCX. Now, the hypothesis is that because you can't measure FCX, it doesn't exist. Well, this is not quite true, because measuring FCX is pretty much an impossibility uh, directly. And directly measuring it is just not possible, and here's why. So the forces acting on anything on the surface of the Earth, or even in the air, we have here, there's um, Fg is the force of gravity, uh, Fcx is the centrifugal force in the tangential direction to the surface, and Fcy is a centrifugal force uh, in the perpendicular direction, and it works in the opposite direction to gravity. So the centrifugal force and the force of gravity are both operating on an object and the net effect is a force that is indicated by this vector Fg dash. Now you're not going to be able to separate out the tangential force there Fcx because all you will see is the force Fg dash. However, you will be able to see a reduction in the magnitude of Fg and Fg dash uh, as a result of Fcy, and that's what you're able to measure. Now, this diagram is not to scale. The actual angle of Fg dash to Fg is going to be 0.1 degrees thereabouts, so it's going to be very, very small. And despite all the protestations of the flat earthers, no, you're not really going to notice this very small amount. So what's the importance of this vector, Fg dash? Well, this is the vector that every object will experience, and this is what will cause things to register as level. So, whatever is perpendicular to Fg dash will be defined as level. And that may or may not be a tangential line to the exact center of the sphere or spheroid. So you're not going to know where the center of the sphere is. There's, you have no way of actually telling what is actually a tangential line or not. The thing is, you've got the closest approximation there is by this line that is perpendicular to your downward force vector. And this downward force vector is affected by FCX and FCY. And again, I reiterate that you cannot measure FCX and you will be able to measure the effect of FCY. Now, if you were to place this a sphere on this surface, which is level, now I know again this is exaggerated, this angle would be very small. And in fact, there's no guarantee that this angle is going to be 0.1 degrees because the surface is an oblate spheroid. So there will be other factors involved in the, the position of this line in relation to a tangential line. But if you place a sphere on a level surface, the very definition of it being level means that this force acting upon it is perpendicular. So this sphere, a silver sphere or whatever, ball bearing, has the only force acting on it is the force straight down the middle there. And there is no sideways force. So consequently, the sphere will have no forces on it in a left or right direction, so it won't move. That nullifies the hypothesis that... If for Fcx to exist, then the sphere must move. That's incorrect. 
the sphere cannot move because it has Fg dash acting on it and Fg dash determines the level surface because every measuring instrument, a plumb bob, a spirit level, relies on Fg dash to determine level. So there you have it. Another thing too about this, this vector is out by a very, very small amount, 0 0.1 degree. So the argument is that you should be pulled towards the equator. Well, let's just see this flat earther here is on a 0.1 degree slope. He would obviously need to be pulled to the right. So a 0.1 degree slope is something like 30 metres over 11 kilometres. So do you think that you would be pulled downhill if you tried to walk that slope? I don't think so. You wouldn't feel it. You wouldn't even notice it. You wouldn't notice 0.1 of a degree. Now, I've just got to go back and do the wording, that wording that was there. Now, we're going to talk about an honest experiment showing how Earth spin does tend to push things towards the equator. OK, got that? This diagram explains how we do that. Now, the centrifugal force is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. It has two components. One component perpendicular to the Earth and one component tangential to the Earth. Now, this one here, the tangential component, is virtually impossible to measure because in order to measure that, you have to determine the vector to the center of gravity. And very, very difficult. You cannot separate the forces that way. So that's pretty much impossible. And just because you cannot measure it in that way does not mean that it does not exist. It does not mean that the Earth is not rotating. Remember, if the Earth is rotating, it has a centrifugal force, not just this equatorial pointing component. So the centrifugal force also has an FCY component. Now, if you can measure the FCY component, then it's a very simple calculation to work out that there is an FCX component. Because if by this diagram here, you have demonstrated that FCX and FCY both make up the centrifugal force. So you can measure FCY and then the relationship between the centrifugal force and FCY is, is uh, FCY is FC cos the angle, cos the latitude. And FCX is FC sine the latitude. So once you have FCY measured, then you have FCX measured. Pretty simple. This is what happens when you use a little bit of critical thinking and a little bit of thinking outside the box. So, is it possible to measure FCY? Of course it is. Because now it manifests itself as a change in weight. Because we have devices that can measure weight and as FCY changes and the uh, gravitational vector changes, we can measure those changes. And uh, this is an honest experiment. It's been done by myself before. I used some cheap and nasty scales before and even got a reasonable result out of it. And uh, I combined the results of all the other people that have tried to, to do this experiment and they all fit very nicely in the oblate spheroid curve. Just a little bit more elaboration of the diagram in relation to an oblate spheroid. So at the equator, the centrifugal force is approximately 0 0.0339 meters per second squared, and the gravitational force 9.8142 meters per second squared. And as you go around, the sphere towards the poles, the angle of the centrifugal force remains in that direction, but the FCY component changes, changes in a way that is predictable by the geometry of the Earth. 
So the scenario in measuring FCX is <coughs> measure the changes in FCY and then see how well it fits that of a rotating spheroid. Remember, if you have an FCY, you also have an FCX because of that uh, undeniable relationship there. I went and I did repeat this experiment. I got a better set of scales, more accurate set of scales. I got some calibration weights and I did some measurements. So Harvey Bay in Queensland, 30th of December, 2019. I took a trip to Melbourne, 12th of January. Another reading. Now in between Harvey Bay and Melbourne, there was a small hiccup in that I think I was using, I got two sets of weights, calibration weights. I believe I was using the wrong set on one of those trips, but I've ignored that for the moment. Um, when I do this again, I'll be a little bit more careful. But I'm just, that small error introduced doesn't really affect the results so much. So then we're off to Phuket. Now, I did stop in Singapore, but I didn't have my scales readily available. Oh, sorry, I didn't have my calibration weights readily available because it's a bit risky taking them through in your hand luggage. So I went to Phuket and we weighed it there. Khon Ken in Thailand, another weight, and up further north to Nong Kai in Thailand. And at this point, unfortunately, there was a small child that mistook my high-precision scientific instrument for a Tonka toy. And uh, that was the end of that. Uh, after that, it still sort of worked, but uh, results were all over the shop. So I've had to stop the experiment there. Uh, I'll repeat the experiment another time. <laughs> but uh, this is where this one ended. So here's my results. These are the measurements that I took. Now the idea of doing these measurements now is then to apply them to the various models. It's no, not necessary to assume any particular model. I've actually compared against five different scenarios and there's more about this in my previous videos on this subject. And then when I run those numbers <coughs> across my Python program, which analyzes the results, and I've described that in a previous video, so I won't go into that again here. But the thing you got to look here is, let's get some pointer options highlighter. So this one here, just my, just my measurements with more accurate scales, the WGS84 model explains 99.8% of the variation in weight versus latitude. It's very significant. That's a very high number. That's a very close correlation. And the thing here, the flat model cannot explain this variation, right? There's nothing in the flat earth model that can explain that variation. I'll just go on to say... Taboo Conspiracy and, and other Flat Earthers have suggested that it's us being dishonest and manipulating elevation and barometric pressure to achieve these results, which is absolutely ridiculous. For starters, who has the data to say how something should weigh different according to barometric pressure? I've never seen anything. It's likely to be so, so small. And... We really don't have control over the barometric pressure. There's no correlation in barometric pressure and the weight. So I really think that that's a crazy thing. We can't manipulate barometric pressure. And the scales, they have a tear button. They always go to zero when you start. So even if barometric pressure had an effect, it would be all zeroed out before you put the weight on it. So that's a ridiculous assertion. Just take, you can, anybody can try it. Just take your scales anywhere, a few different places, take your weights, 
You get the same result. There's no need to hide or be dishonest about anything. And um, so the flat earth model explains 0%. Here's another thing, interesting thing, rotating sphere. It's only 86%. So you see the spheroid versus the sphere. 86% is not too bad, but it's not real good. So the spheroid is the shape that matches and not a sphere. Now, a non-rotating spheroid, it's even worse. There's some variation because of an oblate shape, but non-rotation makes it, it cannot, the data doesn't fit a non-rotating spheroid. And a non-rotating sphere, same thing as flat Earth, on a non-rotating sphere, there would be zero variation. So the fact that we measured variation uh, is clear indication of rotation. And I've just got a straight line model and it's, it's no fit either. So when I plot my results against the different models, this is what I get. Now, my new set of results, very, very good fit to the WGS84 model. And then there's the rotating sphere, stationary spheroid, flat earth. You can see that the results fit very, very well with the rotating spheroid. So there's evidence honestly obtained for the fact that an FCX exists because We've demonstrated here with a high level of correlation that the FCY is a result of the rotation of the Earth. And the FCY exists according to rotation, so therefore the FCX must exist. So, I don't know what you're going to do to make your PDF taste a little bit more tastier. Some sauce, salt and pepper, I don't know. Going to have to do something. And here's I conglomerated now my latest set of results to my previous sets and, and everybody else who's done these kind of measurements. And you can see they all cluster around the uh, rotating spheroid model. So I think that's pretty good. Thanks for watching and please do share, like and subscribe. This is a uh, fantastic bit of science and... Uh, it's always surprising when you go out and make the measurements and you just can't wait to see what it what it and you just can't wait to see how it turns out that uh, all I can say is the better equipment the better the result thank you